Hello and welcome to our podcast. My name is Professor Dr. Wolfgang Georg Alt. I'm the CEO of Kotri China Outbound Tourism Research Institute. Kotri is since 17 years the leading research institute for the development of China's outbound tourism. And I myself have been working with China and with tourism for, oh my God, more than four decades by now. This is the first podcast in the series Cautry Talks. And I'm happy that you take 10 minutes or so of your time to listen to it. In this podcast series, we will talk about the future of tourism in post-pandemic times with a focus, of course, on China's outbound tourism. We will also regularly feature interviews with major players in travel and tourism and with important thought leaders. So let us start the first podcast with one of the most important impulses for a new and better international tourism in the future, the paradigm of meaningful tourism. So what's the background to that? Tourism before the pandemic has developed strongly in quantitative ways, but no structures have been developed to support the quality of the experience of both guests and hosts. By 2019, the year before the pandemic uh, came into existence, overtourism, ecological degradation, and increasing protests of host communities already signaled the need to change the structure of global tourism. The pandemic has offered a chance to, on the one hand, show the importance of transport and tourism for the global economy, and on the other hand, to provide time to pause and rethink the future of tourism. Meaningful tourism is a new concept to go beyond the concepts of sustainable and responsible tourism, as I will explain in a few minutes. So we can clearly see that the need for a paradigm shift in global tourism existed long before the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic started. The very success of international tourism with five times the number of trips in 2019 compared to the year 1980 has made a mockery of the idea of hospitality and ran in many places a juggernaut over local nature, local culture, authenticity, diversity, and serendipity, negatively impacting satisfaction levels of all stakeholders involved. The Atlantic cruise ships, all-inclusive resorts, overcrowded beaches, and Disney-fied tourist cities are all examples of forms of tourism organization, which in effect prevent meaningful guest-host encounters and lead to price wars between providers of increasingly identical service offers, resulting in a race to the bottom in terms of both price and quality. So as we said, the pandemic offered a chance to look at the future of tourism. Meaningful tourism is a new paradigm to go beyond the previous concepts, as we said. It changes the predominantly supply-side oriented and negative perspective of sustainable tourism and responsible tourism towards a demand-side oriented and positive perspective promoting tourism, which is meaningful for all stakeholders involved. And these are the tourists, to, for them to get new experiences and to learn about themselves and about the others. For the host communities to benefit instead of suffer from the visitors. For the staff of tourism and hospitality service providers to offer to them full-time career jobs 12 months a year a good quality service and meaningful activities. So giving also more meaning to their work and thereby uh, also sorting out the problem of not, not finding enough uh, qualified staff in many hospitality and tourism service companies. For governments to gain employment opportunities for their citizens, but also to have an increased tax income and don't let us forget to support friendly international relations. 
But the environment, finally, an encouragement for all stakeholders to be careful and more interested in their surroundings as they feel connected to it, causing no or at least less damage. So the traditional view of tourism clearly came to its limits of the de development. Therefore, already before the pandemic, tourism started to get a bad name, changing the image from being a provider of joy, jobs, and peace to an image of being a force of destruction with all the climate change going on, the over-tourism and the destruction of social and environmental traditions. The growing number of non-Western tourists uh, also felt treated in many cases as second-class customers with compliance to notions of respect of hierarchy or religious dietary restrictions and other rules or of traveling in bigger family groups, etc., all seen rather as a deviation of the quote unquote normal behavior of modern travelers, which would be the behavior of Western people, or as signs of an immature market. So the necessity to rethink tourism is based on the insight that tourism today goes beyond recreation. Today, few people affluent enough to afford tourism, uh, which is maybe about 20% of mankind with respect to international tourism and approximately two thirds of mankind with respect to domestic tourism. Very few of them travel to rest their limbs and muscles. Instead, travel is done for increasingly diverse and often mixed purposes, including for example, digital nomads, combining online work and travel, uh, visiting friends and relatives, business and mice, religion, culture, education, health, special interests, having second homes, and many more, creating a whole universe of unforced mobility motivations. The need for bodily relaxation is not the key purpose of tourism anymore, as the majority of people who can afford tourism spend their working time sitting in front of a computer or in meetings rather than in a coal mine or a factory or on a field. The wish to refresh the brain and the wish for self-actualization by new experiences and new inspirations, as well as by gaining social capital, gaining importance already before the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the sudden experience of the fragility of life and the possibility of a shattering of the perceived stability of personal circumstances, regardless of personal wealth, has led to a new enforcement of the criticism of shallow consumerism and the forms of tourism, which are called 3B, beach, beer, boredom, or 3S, see sun and sex, or in the Chinese variation, sightseeing, shopping, and selfies. So thereby further increasing the demand for meaningful tourism beyond simple recreation and sightseeing. So with the growth of domestic and especially international tourism after the Second World War, concerns about the economic, social, and especially ecological consequences of mass tourism started to be discussed Uh, with the Swiss scientist Claude Caspar calling for what he termed environmental ecology as a new dimension of tourism debate. Another Swiss researcher, Jos Krippendorf, argued in his publication Ferien Menschen, so holiday people in 1984, for a new form of tourism which recreates a harmony between nature and tourists. What follows was first the development of the concept of sustainability and sustainable tourism. And 10 years ago, uh, this was enlarged to a concept of responsible tourism uh, with the professor Harold Goodwin as the most prominent proponent. So he says that responsible tourism is not the same thing as sustainable tourism. Sustainability is a goal, a goal which can only be achieved by taking, by people taking responsibility Uh, together with others to achieve it. So 
This has been, of course, a big part of the debate also in, in the pandemic. But for instance, Mr. Xu Jing, the former director of the Regional Department for Asia and the Pacific of UWTO, has been saying that there is a need for a more substantial change in the perception of the concept of tourism in post-pandemic times than just going back to the concept of sustainable or responsible tourism. Tourism, he says, will no longer be the same after COVID-19, not just for the post-virus recovery period, but also for the future. And his former boss, Dr. Taleb Rifai, who for eight years served as the Secretary General of the UNWTO and is now the Secretary General of the WTFI, World Tourism Forum Institute, similarly gives a clear direction for the necessary development. Tourism will not bounce back, but we will leap forward into a new world. Countries will have to work together if tourism is to recover. One country cannot insist on quarantine while its neighbor demands a vaccination passport and the third requires testing before arrival at entry points. Travel is about connecting everybody everywhere. So end of the quote of Taleb Rifai. In the last few years, however, also the concept of responsible tourism has been criticized as the concept of sustainable tourism before. And uh, so Freya Higgins, Desbiols, for instance, uh, wrote recently, the problem with responsible tourism approaches are that they merely admonish tourism actors to be a little bit more caring and responsible and to clean up the sharper edges of their poor practices. Responsible tourism advocates fail to recognize that these businesses are a part of a structure that is set up unjustly and extracts profits through exploitative practices. So uh, responsible tourism, in her point of view, will not be sufficient to create the fundamental changes that are required to reorient tourism away from the injustices and oppressions it currently enacts and supports. So enter the concept of meaningful tourism. Some organizations already in the past discussed the concept of more meaningful travel as a form of volunteering or as a way for individual global trotters to add meaning to their travels by traveling responsible and by interacting with the local. And Airbnb declared in its uh, 2021 annual report, 2021 will be the year of meaningful travel. Defining meaningful travel as a travel which creates meaningful memories. However, the concept of meaningful tourism goes further than that. It is a new approach which may supersede the concepts of sustainable and responsible tourism in the new era of post-pandemic tourism. Going back to the original five criteria of uh, sustainable tourism, which were developed by Inskeep already in 1991, the aspects of visitor satisfaction and global justice and equity are given more importance, as is the question of the influence of local communities in the development of destinations. It also includes the new concepts of business management, which put a price tag onto the cost of negative developments in the society and of environmental degradation, including it in the balance sheet of both companies and national economies. Meaningful tourism also reflects uh, demographic changes with regard to the global age structure of travelers, with international travelers especially increasingly belonging to the age cohort of 50 plus years. And it also acknowledges the fact that both travelers and service providers in international tourism, hospitality and aviation no longer predominantly belong to North American or European culture backgrounds. And what is considered as meaningful is informed not only by personal tastes or by the destination marketing, but also in a big way by the influence of the cultural background of the travelers and of their peers, of their celebrities, and by the user-generated content on social media. The pandemic has shattered many traditional beliefs and certainties about what tourism is about and how to organize it. Well, 
never let a good crisis go to waste, is an advice which was given originally by Niccolò Machiavelli and was popularized by Churchill. With the help of the meaningful tourism strategy, a new and better future of global tourism in the post-pandemic area can be started. I'm sure we will come back to this topic in the future. But for today, thanks for listening. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write to me using the email alt, that's A-R-L-T, that's my name, A-R-L-T, at china-outbound.com. By the way, besides the podcast, Cotri is also publishing a free weekly publication called Cotri Weekly. For your free subscription, please visit our website, www.china-outbound.com. For today, all best wishes to you, wherever you are, and I hope to hear from you, and I hope that you will listen to some of our future podcasts.